Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. The 29th juz or para of the Qur'an begins with Suratul Mulk. Suratul Mulk is a very virtuous surah. There are various ahadith mentioned about its virtue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah mentions regarding his dominion. Al-Mulk means the dominion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his dominion, what he possesses. And we have Allah mentioning uh, certain uh, signs in his creation which point to his dominion. How, you know, these heavens above us and these stars that are above us, how they are all the creation of Allah and the dominion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how uh, you know, this uh, uh, this dominion of Allah and this, uh, you know, possession of Allah, his, uh, you know, his kingdom, the kingdom of Allah, if we were to look into it, if we were to look deep into, uh, you know, these stars and these planets and the orbits and everything, we would not find any discrepancy in it. Everything is moving in perfect order and you don't see any uh, you know, flaws in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, this surah basically is a warning for the mushrikun and the kuffar uh, that look, how can you associate partners with a God who this is what he possesses and these are some of his, these are some of his attributes and characteristics. Uh, the next surah we have in this juz is Surah Al-Qalam. Surah Al-Qalam uh, basically uh, talks about uh, akhlaq, uh, manners, uh, etiquette, and uh, praising the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for having high, uh, a high level of etiquette and akhlaq. Also we have uh, mention of uh, bad akhlaq uh, throughout the surah. And uh, the best example of that Allah mentions in the story of uh, the, the, the companions of the garden and how they were greedy uh, for what they had, for what Allah had given them. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed uh, their garden. Uh, then after that we have uh, Surah Al-Haqqa. Surah Al-Haqqa basically uh, mentions uh, some of the uh, end consequences uh, or end result of uh, those who disbelieved among the nations of the past. Uh, also, it mentions uh, something, a few, a few descriptions of the Day of Judgment. Uh, also mentioning, uh, you know, the throne of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Arsh of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and also mentioning uh, that uh, each and every single one of us uh, will be given our book of records. Uh, some it will be given to us in our right hands and for others it will be given to us in our left hands. Uh, after that, uh, the, 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 the surah is basically concluded by mentioning uh, that whatever Allah uh, sent the Messenger وسلم, with, then it was the truth from Allah. It was the truth from Allah without any shadow of doubt in it. After that, we have Surah Al-Ma'arij. Surah Al-Ma'arij uh, basically, uh, once again, gives us a description of the Day of Judgment and what will happen on that day. Uh, we also have a description of the people of Jannah and some of the blessings that they will be blessed with on, uh, uh, in, in Jannah. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning some of the uh, the characteristics of the people of Jannah in this dunya. How uh, they are people who pray, they are people who give in sadaqah, and so on and so forth. Uh, but notice how Allah starts by mentioning that they are people who pray all the time. Uh, and, and then Allah ends the list of their descriptions by once again mentioning salah. And how they are those who preserve their salah. And so this shows us the importance of salah, uh, praying five times a day. After that, we have Surah Nuh. 
Surat Nuh uh, mentions uh, the entire st uh, the entire surah basically is concerning the story of Nuh alayhi salam and uh, his da'wah, uh, him calling his people to Islam. And so uh, it mentions how uh, Nuh alayhi salam called his people to Islam and then he complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Oh Allah, I have tried and tried and tried. Remember that Nuh alayhi salam gave da'wah to his people for 950 years and so he was patient but in the end uh, he said he, he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and complained to Allah that oh Allah I have done everything I can but these are a people who do not listen they are a people who are stubborn and so it mentions to us uh, Allah mentions to us what happened with these people and how he destroyed them and punished them after that, we have Surah Al-Jinn. Surah Al-Jinn basically uh, mentions the story of uh, that group of the jinn who uh, listened to the message of, of the Qur'an and embraced Islam. And so Allah mentions here uh, their discussion. So the jinn are speaking uh, and so they are telling us about themselves and how the jinn uh, you know, what they used to do before the coming of the messenger, the, how they used to go into the heavens and they used to try to uh, steal uh, the secrets of the heavens and uh, after the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa was sent, uh, how they are not able to do that anymore and how among the jinn are Muslims and among them are kuffar, among them are the righteous, among them are the evil ones and so on and so forth. Uh, after that we have Surah Al-Muzzammil Surah Al-Muzzammil uh, basically was one of the very very first uh, verses that were revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so basically after uh, after Iqra after that was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we can say that the next Surah that was revealed to him was Surah Al-Muzzammil Allah calls on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ya Ayyuhal Muzzammil The one who is wrapped up Because after his first encounter with Jibreel and the revelation He went to his wife Khadija He was afraid and you know he was shivering So uh, he wrapped himself up and Khadija wrapped him up So Allah refers to him as Al Muzzammil uh, Allah mentions in this surah The importance of Ibadah The importance of turning to Allah in worship, especially uh, for the one who is involved in da'wah. Uh, and so the Prophet Sallallahu is about to start a huge mission. And so Allah mentions that he should pray in the last third of the night or in the, in the night time he should pray along with the believers. They should pray. Uh, also they should recite the Qur'an. And so it shows us the importance of al-ibadah, especially Qiyamul Layl, and the effect that it has uh, in, in uh, a person who is involved in da'wah. After that we have Surah Al-Muddathir, which was also one of the early surahs, uh, one of the early, early surahs that were revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu We have here, uh, this surah talks about um, giving da'wah, uh, especially uh, making the da'wah public. Uh, and so Allah says, Qum And so prior to that, uh, the da'wah was secret. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ was only uh, giving da'wah to his close uh, relatives and people who were close to him. Now he's been commanded to, uh, you know, uh, give da'wah publicly to everyone. Uh, in this surah, we have, um, uh, uh, Allah mentions, uh, how the enemies of Islam respond to the da'wah uh, also how they respond to the Qur'an when they hear the Qur'an uh, how they are like donkeys who when they hear uh, the sound of a lion they, 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 they get filled with fear and they run away and so this is how the kuffar are the enemies of Islam are when they hear the, uh, the Qur'an being recited after that we have Surah Qiyamah Surah Al-Qiyamah gives us a description of the Day of Judgment, uh, Yawm Al-Qiyamah. 
uh, and also what will happen before it and what will happen uh, after it. Uh, and uh, throughout the surah, Allah mentions al insan, uh, the human being. Uh, it is mentioned six times in the surah. Uh, so many times in this short surah it is mentioned uh, to basically show us the importance that, uh, you know, uh, where we come from, Allah created us from nothing, and where we are eventually going, and that is to Yawm al Qiyamah. After that, we have Surah Al Insan. Surah Al Insan basically uh, summarizes for us uh, the punishment that awaits the disbelievers. Uh, and also, on, on the other hand, it mentions uh, the blessings that await the believers. Uh, and so, Allah mentions uh, several uh, blessings of the people of Jannah. And also, Allah mentions, uh, you know, various descriptions of the, uh, the, the punishment that awaits uh, the kuffar uh, in the hellfire. And then finally, we have Surah Al-Mursalat. Surah Al-Mursalat uh, is the last surah in this juz. It basically uh, affirms uh, the issue of the resurrection, that there is life after death with various evidences, Allah mentions it, uh, and that's why uh, Allah uh, mentions uh, throughout the surah, وَيْلٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ So, woe, woe be to, uh, to the, the people who deny, woe be to them on that day, woe be to them on that day. Meaning that, you know, uh, these kuffar, who deny the reality of life after death, woe be to them on that day. Because on that day, they will see the reality of life after death. And so, uh, you know, it is best for them now to believe, rather than regretting on that day. Uh, and that is what we basically conclude with in this session. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.